नमस्कार एवरीवन वेलकम टू सी टी एस ब्लॉक टू यूनिट फाइव डिस्कवरिंग अ टाउन गाइड एंड द सिटी टूअर द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द यूनिट फॉलोज इंक्लूड्स ऑब्जेक्टिव इंट्रोडक्शन सोर्सेज ऑफ लोकल इंफॉर्मेशन प्लानिंग द टूअर प्रिपेरिंग फॉर द टूअर अंडरटेकिंग द टूअर एंड द समरी लेट्स बिगिन विद द इंट्रोडक्शन This unit takes into account of conducting of a city tour. Generally in such tours it is the same person only who plays the role of a guide, tour escort or manager. Discovering a town is a fascinating subject for you as a tourist guide. As you begin to work will with uh, will be surprised at the amount of interesting details about your own town which have probably escaped your notice. However, because each town has its own peculiarities from the point of view of tourist interest, the discussion in the subsequent section is only intended to serve as a sample. Sometimes you will be able to supplement the information given in the unit in a reality substantial way. At other times you may not be able to find the suggested information Similarly do not expect every detail of your neighborhood of mode of organizing a tour of your town should follow exactly the pattern suggested here We have taken the city of Delhi as the case study in this unit for applying most of the concepts of guiding a city tour in the annexure So the first important point which you have to take care is the sources of local information collecting information about your locality or town is the first step in your scheme to tap its tourist potential everyone knows something or the other about the locality one lives in however when it comes to describing or explaining it to the others particularly when one is doing it professionally one has to to be better equipped in the following sections you have provided with a discussion on some of the major and important sources of gathering local information the first one is books books are obviously the foremost source for getting the information about your locality there are available guide books describing the history culture and economic resources of the locality we suggest that you collect such guides or read them in the local libraries however one special care must invariably taken while using such guide books In many cases these guide books contain along with history of lots of mythological details and fables concerning the town you should take care to sift them apart we do not say that such details are of no use but they should be separated from the history and used as a material suggestive for social fabric of the locality the other kind of book where information about a town locality is available is the gazetteer of the district in which town is located You may consult the gazetteer in the library of the district or at the office of the collector of the district gazetteer gives you the information on the following subjects of your town about history geography and topography important places that is monuments cultural heritage art forms etc fairs festivals and customs economic resources flora and fauna and availability of public facilities like post office telegraph office hospitals etc for these places which have already become tourist sites we have detailed references in the literature produced by the state or central tourism departments such literature can be obtained from respective offices of the tourism department of the city The another important feature to add is maps. Maps are very useful source for gathering information on a variety of subjects pertaining to a town. A general map of your town would contain details regarding its boundaries, main markets, the road patterns, the location of public utility services and the industrial or cultural centers if any. With the help of the map of your locality you would be able to understand its tourism potential and plan a trip accordingly the maps of the towns are generally to be had from the offices of the collector municipality and pradhanadhikari or its equivalent 
as the case may be. The another point is pictorial records. The pictorial records are of different forms and serve a very useful purpose. The four main categories in which most of these records are likely to exist are paintings and etchings, drawings and engravings, photographs, aerial photographs. One great advantage of pictorial records is that they in themselves form a significant tourist attraction. However, they help you in preparing a lucid commentary during your day-long trips or the sessions planning the tour. Now that you have acquainted yourself with different details about your town locality, you should be able to plan a tour of your town for an itinerant tourist or a group of tourists. The general principles of guiding a city tour have been incorporated as and when we have felt it necessary to do so. The case we have chosen for elaboration here is that of a city of Delhi, an inner city tour. We expect you to utilize this e-study in planning city tours of your towns or localities in similar patterns. You may in addition be innovative in such plans may also deviate from the pattern suggested here if be needed. In planning an inner city tour, you should be able to identify more than one type of tour, understand how an itinerary is organized and what goes into it and locate different modes of travel for the tour. Variety offered a lot of works goes into planning a tour. Even when the proposed route is familiar and even when the entire package is repeat of previous trips or years, there are still many details to review. Though standard tours may continue to thrive, today's traveler may be looking for something extra, something different, that is something to experience and later talk about. Obviously, not everyone is a candidate for every tour, but the variety of available itineraries reminds us that there are many places to see and things to do that are outside the typical tour package. What the careful planner must do is to try to anticipate future demands of a fickle public. There are unlimited possibilities in this regard. Planning varies with the company and with the nature of the tours. Large tour operators have many of their itineraries set from year to year. But even with the traditionally popular tours, someone has to establish the initial program and someone has to keep the diversion fresh and exciting. In the case of Delhi, for example, the following type of tours are generally available. Delhi State Tourism Development Corporation conducts sightseeing tours in ordinary or luxury coaches, which is full day or a half day. Indian Tourism Development Corporation, ITDC, includes major sites in Delhi in its package tours. Low-cost tours conducted by different travel agencies, which major may have the services of a tourism professionals. Tour operators by hostels, by hotels where tourists stay, such tours are often licensed with low cost tours. Tours offered by taxi drivers, mostly to domestic or sometimes an adventurous foreign tourist. It is advised that such drivers acquire some knowledge of the area to be able to do justice to their work. The next part is the itinerary. Organizing the itinerary is very important aspect of a city tour. As a tour manager, you must mentally prepare the itinerary route before the trip takes off. This will help you locate possible hitches in the itinerary set by you. Some common points to be taken care are given below. Will the tour party have time for lunch? Will the tour party be able to repeat the pace of stay on time for supper? Will the shops be open the day of the tour? Have you given sufficient time to the tour party to see the architectural heritage of the city? And is it not that you have camped too many things in the itinerary and suffocated the tour party, etc. All planned events should be nailed down. Therefore, check these details out. Tourists will also want to know these things. So having the details in advance is an advantage. Reading old itineraries or wholesalers' itineraries or package itineraries or competitive itineraries provide clues to forming an independent travel schedule. 
materials may be garnered from tourist carriers, hotels, libraries, guidebooks, and the comments of agency personnel and veteran travelers, consequence agents, file reports when they return, establishing a catalog of materials for their colleagues to draw from. The another uh, part is modes of travel. Generally, it is the luxury coach, taxi, or buses that are used as a mode. However, we would like to emphasize that motor transport is not always the best mode of travel for a city tour. In some cases, as some of you will notice, it is not even feasible to have a city tour on motor transport. It is therefore for crucial importance that you plan a convenient mode of travel for your tour party. You may also explore the possibility of engaging local transport such as cycle, rickshaws, tongas for tour parties not very big in size. This mode of travel is very exciting proposition to tourists. The most dangerous thing to do is guess about any aspect of the itinerary or to act on sketchy information. Before anything is offered to the public, the tour planner should satisfy themselves that the item is as represented and that it meets all the tour standards. A model tour itinerary for your help has been given below. We hope that you will able to work upon and prepare a better tour itinerary yourself. We also advise you to provide a copy of the itinerary to each member of the tour party. I hope you might have find the itinerary easy and interesting and now onwards you can plan your itineraries by your own. Let's proceed further. In many towns, we stress the most convenient and also enjoyable tour can be undertaken in the form of a walk along their streets and the lanes. This way, the tour party gets to see the life of the town from close quarters. By the way of a specimen, we have given here the details of one such walk along with the inner city of Delhi. This may serve as a model, but also may be modified suitably to your requirements. It is to be noted that here, time is the crucial factor. The tourist should not be rushed upon. You can check your progress by answering the following questions. The next part is preparing for the tour. Preparing for the tour involves two major aspects, the commentary and the useful material and travel tips to the tourists. First of all, commentary. Assuming the escort is going to have something to say even if he or she is not doing the bulk of the descriptive work on the tour, it pays to gather material well in advance of the trip and to collect it in some readily usable form. The three ring notebook with flexible binder works well. Two or three of these fit handily into any luggage. Perhaps one contains the itinerary, address, national and city maps, charts on monetary exchange, names of the restaurant, lists of optional tour choices, facts about entertainment selection and other items directly pertinent to the trip. The second book can be filled with the historical and the cultural facts, jokes, anecdotes, songs, appropriate poetic and literary selections and other materials. The first notebook helps the escort accomplish the required duties, while the second or the third gives this person something to say and do. Commentary takes experience, not only in knowing what to say, but in knowing when to say and how to say. You can't afford to ignore important landmarks. There are also times when you would want to make general comments about things like native music, habits or domestic life. Take a look in the driver's mirror or turn around and view the passengers. Are half of them asleep? Do you want to waken them up? You must also know how much to say. There is no need of wall-to-wall -wall remarks. Break the presentations up leaving ample gaps for conservation, dozing or personal reflection. At any time, keep the comments brief. A 20-minute monologue is disastrous. Alternate information, songs, stories and silence be the rule. And don't force-feed passengers with your own favourite aristocratic historical theories. They can't or won't take in them. One good way to break the tedium of the tour is by inviting audience participation. Perhaps one or two members can sing or tell stories. 
perhaps some tour member has special knowledge of an area ahead or relatives who came from there. Let them share. This sort of activity must be controlled since you don't want blue material, offensive, ethnic jokes, boring anecdotes or drunken reveries. Stay in charge while involving the others. The next point to be considered is material and travel tips. Tour operator and travel agency regularly supply some materials to the travellers. The kind and number of these gifts vary from place to place, but the idea behind the item is to provide more comfort and interest on the trip. Some of the things frequently supplied are Mail information This would include the average number of days to be allowed for mail to previous parts of the world, the cost of air mail postage to these same destinations, the correct manner to address air mail envelopes and other pertinent data. The travel agency is usually listed below in case friends or relatives seek further advice. Passenger list. Each tour member should get a couple of these. This makes the group more congenital and aids those congenital and aids those with short memories. Maps. Some sort of map is a nice gift. Occasionally, these maps will be pro-marked with route or the escort and the driver may mark them as a conclusion of the journey if the passenger approves. You may also pass along various tips on everything from packaging and photography to shopping and customs. It is helpful to the participant to have it all in writing. The sample has given below. For example, there are few tips for clothing. You can wear light summer wear, open sandals preferred, you can keep sunglasses, small hand towel, camera with two, three rolls of the daylight films or the present day cameras, a pair of binoculars, no money to beggars, etc. The next part along the process is undertaking the tour. Once everybody is bored, the coach departs and you greet the passengers passing on necessary information. The driver also may have a few words to say, perhaps reviewing the day's itinerary. Because some travels, travelers like to follow the trip on their maps, a few moments could be spent outlining the precise route. Here, you must remember a few important things discussed below. Length of the day trip. This is a very important part. Tour planners should consider the endurance of passengers. The age of the group will have something to do with this. So, Will the amount of driving the previous day, the weather, the evening activities, the meals and the general health and the morale of the group. Don't push them. If possible, avoid long days back to back. Even the most energetic, curious and adventurous travellers get tired of constant movement. Schedule shorter days, space out the free time. You must also consider company or governmental restrictions on the number of hours one driver is allowed to drive a coach. These have to be calculated as the part of your travel plan. Also ensure that the driver follows traffic regulations. This wins the confidence of the tourists. Next point is stops during the tour. Rests and meal stops are important and must be planned. The first rest stop usually occurs a couple of hours after departure and another may take place a few hours past lunch. When the coach makes such a stop, sufficient time should be allowed, particularly if toilet facilities are limited. This means a halt of at least 20 to 30 minutes and departure time must be announced. If this is an area where a tip is expected for use of washroom facilities, Travellers should be warned beforehand. Otherwise, the tour manager or the guides or the escorts may end up having to rescue a bewildered tourist from an irid washroom attendant. The location of the toilet should be pointed out along with other places such as coffee shops and sightseeing areas that are sited nearby. Shopping should be discouraged on these short stops, but it can't be completely cancelled. Some tourists will always like to pick up a thing or two. In some small towns, there are no convenient public restrooms. This means the passengers must avail themselves of the hospitality of hotels and the restaurant. 
In this case, the tour manager should suggest they split up and not all descend on the same place in one go. Some limited flexibility may be granted on the rest stops, but still, schedules must be met. Every tour has its photographers, casual or serious. They will want to opportunities. They'll want opportunities to take pictures. This means some unplanned stops in route when photo possibilities appear. Since almost everything looks exciting and pictures queue to the strange, such pauses must be kept at a minimum. This is the price the photographer pays for the other benefits of a tour group. When a scenic spot is reached, the coach may halt and passenger be invited to their shots. Warn them each time about crossing the road. As soon as they have had a reasonable chance for a few pictures, signal them aboard. Nobody should take time to climb a nearby hill or wander off into the fields. Non-photographers are usually tolerant of these stops, but up to a point only. Unless the tour group is quite small and the touring area well known, the tour escort shouldn't figure on making a random decision about lunch. In all planned tours, the lunch on stops are always mapped out in advance. If possible, avoid remote places. But if the itinerary is unavoidably places uh, you in such spot, then either pack, pack a lunch or book a lunch at some convenient facility. Arriving with 40 people in a town that has only one hotel is a serious mistake unless the hotel has been forewarned. Smaller groups have fewer meal problems. With a dozen or so travellers, it is always possible to stop without specific reservation at a place where there are several restaurants, hotels and coffee shops. The group can then divide up and patronise a number of these. The escort should make sure, however, that these spots are clean, comfortable, reasonable and that they serve decent food. A lot a minimum of an hour for lunch under ideal circumstances. An hour and a half is more realistic. Passengers who finish eating early can shop or browse, set a time for return to the coach. If the meal is the part of the tour voucher or travel service, orders are used. Avoid a situation where no vouchers are available and you want to feed the group. Though this may be possible when you discuss it with the restaurant or the hotel management, identify yourself and the tour and promising to pay later, not all the managements may agree, but tourists must be accommodated at other times. For example, shopping, brief halls for the occasional craft shop, a chance to cash traveller checks, preferably at the time when everyone exercises this opportunity. Peddlers and other uninvited persons should be kept off the coach. You may occasionally bring someone you know aboard to speak a few phrases in the native language or sing a song or tell a story, but otherwise only tour members and tour personals should be aboard. Next important point is shopping. Even though surrounded by the beauty of an evening and hour, some tourists are still concentrated about what time the shops open. They are travellers for whom shopping is the highlight of the trip. They want to lose themselves in the flea market or the native bazaars. Consequently, you must allow sufficient time for them to get this out of their systems. At the same time, however, shopping time must be controlled. Some members may resent the amount of time being allotted to this activity. There must be blend where it's disastrous not to allow some reasonable time for people to frequent the shop. It's just as annoying to pull up to every craft or clothing sign. Know the days and hours when shops are open. Shops may close at noon and reopen later in the afternoon. You must check on this when making out the itinerary. If you have calculated incorrectly, you had better consider some adjustments. Some recommendations to tour members may be welcome, but the tour escort shouldn't be put in the position of touting specific shops. Warn tour members about the possible rip-offs or about shopping areas to shun at the night. Despite your lectures, however, some tour members will never get the local currency straight. Charts showing the various coins and the bills are terrific aid. But even then, many tourists merely reach into their pockets. 
extract a handful of change and say, here, take what you want. Those who master the finance not only shop more wisely, they also got an ego boost. Even more valuable is the tour escort who can spot fakes, knows that items using endangered species may be confiscated in custom and has some idea of what similar goods cost elsewhere. That doesn't mean, however, that the tour escort is in any way responsible for the purchases or for their safe arrival home, but these are the buyer's risk. In some areas, haggling is part of economic life. Merchants expect the buyers to argue about the price and to attempt to reduce this. The tourist should have some idea about how much he or she needs to pay for an article, whether or not this is really a bargain. Problem spots Some tour problems are beyond the control of even the most ca cautious tour escort. Most, however, can be anticipated and avoided. A strong argument can be made for keeping a checklist and for having a set of detailed rules and instructions. Think about difficulties that might arise and do a try run on your strategy, then meet them. Keep a list of local contacts in every region you visit and know where you can turn for help. Besides experience and careful planning, tact and common sense are valuable assets, especially when the unexpected occurs. Above all, don't panic as too much depends on you. Maintain a calm demore even if there are problems in plenty. Getting excited is not only demoralizing to others, but also prevents you from thinking clearly and logically. Some of the common problems that you might face are discussed below. Luggage issues. Bags are one of the tour's major headaches and you can't check them too often. People leave something behind or grab the wrong bag. Travelers frequently fail to heed the warning about adding and subtracting luggage. It's often the innocent who suffer. They are minus toilet articles or underwears or jackets until the lost items catch up. They may have to replace things in order to cope or depend on the sympathy and generosity of fellow tour members. When you are on the move, make certain you allow sufficient time for the bags to make it to the proper hotel. It is also sensible planning to leave your expensive items like jewelry in a safe place at home. Tourists should take only what is needed. They should identify their bags inside and out, keep a list of items being carried and mark their luggage with something distinctive so that it won't be picked up by the mistake. I'm correcting the word underwear, it is under wheel. The next important point is to take care is missing tour members. Suppose you are checking people in at the point of departure and one or two of persons have failed to arrive. Remember that your first responsibility is to the tour as a whole. This means you would ordinarily depart without the missing persons. Exceptions to this rule would be if you happen to have this person's passport and he can't leave the country without it or his tickets although these may be left at the airline or the hotel counter or if the individual is elderly and you have no idea where he or she is you can't merely abdon people in these extreme cases you would turn the group over temporarily to some responsible tour members and join them as soon as you can if the tour members become lost in route check the hotel fellow passengers likely area locales and as a last resort notify police before you move on, you must know what had happened to them. Perhaps you may have to delay departure until you know the whereabouts of the missing person. The next is loss of passport. This is an important document and should be kept on one's person at all times. There could be routine checks by authorities or a need for identification when financing purchase or requirement when cashing checks in foreign banks. Want tour members not to leave their passport in restrooms, hotel rooms or on the airplanes or the coaches. Should the passport be lost, go over all the places where it might have been mislaid. If nothing turns up, contact the nearest embassy. They will require a proof that it is really lost, like a statement from the police plus a witness of a person with a valid passport, perhaps yourself. 
tour escort should carry a list of tour members passport numbers plus date and place of issue loss of passport is always a serious matter but it may be far more serious in some countries other than consulates and embassies are normally closed on weekends and at night so a message should be left about the lost passport with a request of assistance and a phone number where you may be reached next is loss of funds in tickets loss of these items is the responsibility of the individual but the tour escort should know how to advise the traveler it is nearly impossible to recover stolen cash unless money is found by an honest person who has the time to seek you out but the best solution is to carry very little cash if tickets are lost either by you or by a traveler the loss should be reported immediately to the carrier and to your own agency as well as to the operator handling that portion of the tour substitute tickets should be provided and any difference can be settled by you at a later date and the next point to be taken care is illness travelers are expected to provide for their own medical needs this means bringing along their own drugs prescriptions and diets and making their own arrangements for any checkups or hospital stays the tour escort however will probably carry items like aspirin cough drops nose drops band-aids and remedies for upset stomachs yet one must be careful about dispensing these a knowledge of first aid including artificial respiration is a handy skill you may never need them but people will look to you for assistance in any emergency including illness colds headaches nausea and diarrhea are common alignments but when traveling with a group they become serious maladies colds and respiratory infections spread rapidly try to get any sick person to a doctor as soon as possible for that person's good well as well as health of the tour by this we have come to this end of the unit so now let's just sum up we hope that you have acquainted yourself with the essential knowledge of guiding a city tour as stated earlier the work on guiding such a tour begins with identifying sources of local information some important sources for example books maps and pictorial records after this you get on with the planning of the tour where you pay attention to the varieties of the city tour the itinerary and the different modes of travel available in your area the next stage is that of making preparation for the tour you arrange interesting material about the town to be used for a commentary on a board a coach you also provide some utility material as gift to the tourist as also some travel tips relevant to your area now you are ready to embark on the tour but you take care that the length of the tour does not become unbearable the members of the tour party do not forget to provide brief rest stops and lunch stops also time for shopping also take care of a few problem spots particularly loss of luggage and the money and illness to any tour members thank you for viewing this video